What's up Resto Mods? Chris here with RM13, our 1969 Dodge Charger RTSE. Today we're going to walk through the build sheet and show you all the cool things about this car. You may remember in early 2020 we gave away a similar 69 Dodge Charger, also black. My name is Ronald Gear. I just won this 1969 Dodge Charger from RestoMods.com. This one's a little bit different. For starters, it's an RTSE. What does that mean? RT was road and track. In 69, they made about 80, 90,000 of these Dodge Chargers. Only about 20% of those were optioned as an RT. Those came with two different models of a 440 or a Hemi. This came with the more powerful 440 coming off the factory floor at 375 horsepower. The engine in this particular car is a period correct 440, meaning it's also from 1969. It's been bored and stroked out to over 500 inches and recently was on the dyno and did over 520 horses at the wheel, probably over 600 at the crank. So we'll get into some of that stuff. The SE package this car was originally ordered with is called the Special Edition. It came with turn signals here in the scallops of the hood, a wood grain dash, some upgraded gauges, and a couple other parts. Those have all been mostly lost. The dash is completely new. The only trace of the SE package remaining is these turn signals in the hood scallops. So we had to do another 69 Dodge Charger because to me, this is the pinnacle of the muscle car movement in the late 60s, early 70s. The iconic Coke bottle shape that you see here in the fenders as it's moving through the car, the scallops in the door and the hood. This line right here on the hood that comes off the back window, the flying buttresses in the back to me is the greatest line in all of muscle car history coming out of the United States. Uh, and so it's such an iconic piece of muscle car history. We had to do it again, and we think this is one of the nicest 69 Chargers we've ever seen, and we want to give it to you. I'm here with Chris, our master mechanic, the man who tore this car down and put it all back together. What do we got? So first off, when we got this car, it was electric blue, really bright color. We went ahead and tore it down to a bare shell and sent it over to our friends at Chaperone Body and Paint to get refinished in a classic tuxedo black. Let's take a look under the hood. Feast your eyes. Yeah, we're working with a big block Mopar here. As Chris stated before, this thing's been bored and stroked to over 500 cubic inches. And that's what really puts the power down in this thing. Also, the Indy cylinder heads really make the engine. It's got a lot of good parts, especially the Phytech fuel system on it. It's got an MSD distributor, got a nice serpentine setup up front from Eddy Motorsports. We polished pretty much everything we could get our hands on valve covers, intake manifold, uh, which is also an Indy part. It's a port matched manifold to the head. You guys will also see this thing has some modern features like a high amp alternator, uh, AC compressor, gotta have AC. Uh, this thing has ceramic coated TTI headers, which really help get the exhaust gas out. Uh, the list goes on and on, but also the fuel injection really makes this thing drivable. A lot of times you get an older engine and you start putting out close to 600 horsepower at the crank, drivability is gonna suffer. So with the Phytech unit, you get that reliability. The cold start issues are just gone. Uh, we took this up to Phytech and had them dyno tune it and they did some drivability tuning and it's just a dream to drive and it puts the power down. So when you push that right pedal, it does exactly what you want. All that power is going through a Silver Sport Transmissions Tremec TKO 5 speed. Uh, Silver Sport really has a complete package. This has a hydraulic clutch, which is amazing to drive, and their bell housing as well. So that's what's under the hood, but one of the most iconic pieces of the 69 Charger is this whole front end right here. So you can see we kept an original front end, got an RT badge on there, it's the only RT badge on the car. Yeah. Uh, it also has these iconic headlight doors uh, that were originally uh, connected to a vacuum pump. Uh, the vacuum pump is gone, they're replaced with modern electric motors to smoothly open those doors and reveal the headlights. One of the first things I saw when we were looking at this car uh, are these American Racing Torque Thrust wheels. Yeah, so the American Torque Thrust Racing Wheel, I'm sure you've all seen it. Love it or hate it, it looks good on this car. Uh, it really accents with the black, it brings a classic look to it. We've modernized so much on this car that we wanted to have some classic elements still to it, so we left the Torque Thrust wheels. They are on a bigger modern size, which you can see. 18 inches in the front and 20s in the back. These are complemented with Mickey Thompson tires, front and rear, these are their Sportsman SRs. Uh, and hiding behind those wheels, you can see the big Willwood upgraded brakes we did. This car had four wheel disc brakes on it when we got it, and they were Willwoods up front, but it had four piston calipers, and that just wasn't gonna cut it for us. We decided to upgrade to their six piston setup. We went with a bigger rotor, this is a 12.88 rotor. Uh, so this thing performs really well as far as stopping on a dime, getting this big car slowed down, 
Uh, when you're putting down a lot of power, you need to upgrade everything around the car to match it. So that's what we did with the brakes and also the suspension. So from the factory, these cars had a torsion bar based front suspension, which was adequate uh, in the 60s. But we really wanted to bring this car up to modern handling standards and really be able to safely manage the power that we got in this thing. So it has a Magnum Force front K-member, which includes fabricated lower control arms, tubular upper control arms. It's uh, four A arms now, coilovers in the front, so you can really dial in the adjustability and the ride height even. And this thing integrates a modern rack and pinion and a bigger, beefier sway bar. So this thing doesn't have that tuna boat feel anymore that you get from some of these big body Mopars when they have their original suspension. So we didn't stop at the front suspension. This thing got fully upgraded in the back as well, which means we got rid of the stock leaf springs it had. And this thing has a triangulated four link in the back now. Uh, it's a lot more adjustability. It's got coilovers in the back now. We mini tubbed it to fit this uh, wheel and tire package in here. So this thing really puts the power down a lot better now with the four link. Speaking of putting the power down, that mini tub makes room for how big of a tire? <laughs> These are 15 inch wide Mickey Thompson tires. So proportionately, they look just right on the car, but it's a really wide tire and you need it. You need all the rubber to the ground with this thing. So moving around to the rear end of this car, which is what most people on the road will see as you're driving by, uh, you can see it's mostly classic. Uh, this is an original iconic piece of this 69 Charger. And I know we say that a lot, but these flying buttresses on the back of this car to me are the best line in all muscle car history. So of course, all that is still there. Uh, looks beautiful in this tuxedo black. We did keep what looks like the original tail lights, but hiding underneath that is some upgrades. Yeah, so this utilizes the factory lenses. Uh, pretty much everything in the exterior in the back is factory original type parts. But behind those lenses, we did some uh, Digitales LED tail light panels. Right now we got these tail lights switched into sequential mode which is pretty cool. It lights up from the inside out. Out at night, it's kind of impressive. You get the full spectrum. LED panel is the full tail light. Whereas factory, you know, they had three bulbs, which were a little dim, so. And one of my favorite things about the rear end of these cars is the fuel cap. Everybody knows this Charger fuel cap. It's got the kind of flip up action. Uh, just brings a smile to my face every time we gotta put gas in this car, which is often because she can drink. Big cubic inches, big amounts of gas. So the upgrades don't stop here. Let's head into the interior. So in the interior of this car, you immediately notice a ton of things. First of all, it's got a full custom center console uh, with cup holders in it. Uh, it's a nice suede cover on it. It's got controls for your power windows. Uh, it's also got controls for the electric cutouts for this car. So it comes with, uh, what kind of exhaust is on this? It's got a full three inch piping with Dynamax mufflers and electric cutouts. Uh, we've also got some lighting built into the center console right here. And of course, uh, the what has become uh, the iconic pistol grip shifter, uh, which actually wasn't available in 69. Uh, didn't become available as an option until 70, but it is just so darn cool that we put one in here. Not only did we put one in here, these typically will come from Hearst with a plastic grip right here. Um, we reached out to our friends at Idle Hands Woodwork and they custom make uh, mahogany grips for these pistol grips, which if you're gonna go as far as to have a pistol grip shifter, you should probably go as far as to have an Idle Hands Woodwork custom mahogany pistol grip shifter. We tossed a little blue in here as kind of an homage to the blue that this car was. Um, speaking of blue, we've got uh, Dakota digital gauges in here and a whole bunch of other cool electronics if you wanna walk us through that driver's side. Yeah, so I'm sitting in my favorite seat in the house here, the driver's seat of this car. So as Chris mentioned, it's got the Dakota digital gauges. We like using those in a lot of our projects. Um, these fit into the stock uh, instrument cluster but really bring up the, the gauges to modern standards and you can keep a better eye on all your vital things going on in the engine bay. This car also has, I mean, all the modern amenities. It's got a really nice stereo. It's an Alpine head unit with a kicker amp and a subwoofer. Uh, this also has classic auto air for the air conditioning. So all your controls are integrated nicely into the factory dash location. Everything else is pretty original looking though in terms of the actual controls for the headlights the wipers, all those controls uh, are all the original knobs and switches. Um, so it's kind of a mix of a classic look, the original instrument cluster and the dash, but a bunch of extra upgraded features. Also yeah. these seats, we're sitting on what I think are modern Charger seats, right? Yeah, so these started out as like seats out of a late 2000s type Charger, but just without the headrest. Uh, so these are reupholstered with some Alcantara 
Um, and then the uh, factory type upholstery on it, but in leather, um, and it kind of matches the door panels. And these are actually wrapped as well. So even the stuff that kind of looks original has been fully restored and gone through on this car. Uh, dash pad is brand new. All, all the trim is brand new. So this thing doesn't disappoint. I mean, the interior looks just as good as the exterior. So the real treat is uh, getting to hear the noise this thing makes. So let's start it up. Yes, sir. Fire it up. Now we're going to check out these cutouts. Here are the bald eagles. That never gets old. Never gets old. <laughs> so that's it. This is our 1969 Dodge Charger RTSE RM13, our 13th giveaway car that we are proud to offer to you guys. So don't miss out. Head over to RestoMods.com today. Claim your entries to win this beast. We give away a car every three months. Don't miss out.